Chapter 19 of The Tower Treasure by Franklin W. Dixon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Mystery Deepens Fenton Hardy was dumbfounded when his sons returned to him with the news that the loot had been found in neither the old tower nor the new. So implicitly had he believed in the dying confession of Red Jackley that he had not even bothered to join in the search, preferring to let his sons have the satisfaction of recovering the stolen goods that he was positive were hidden in the old tower. "'And you're sure you searched the place thoroughly?' he asked for the third time. "'Every inch of it. There was nothing in the old tower. No one had been there in weeks,' answered Frank. "'How could you tell?' "'By the dust. It hadn't been disturbed. There wasn't a footprint of any kind.' "'But you searched anyway?' "'We went through the tower from top to bottom,' Frank replied. "'It wasn't any use. No one had been there. "'So then we thought Jackley might have been mistaken "'and that he had left the stuff in the other tower.' "'And Applegate let you search that as well?' "'And Fenton Hardy's eyes twinkled. "'Not until we had told him our reasons. "'We told him about Jackley, "'and then he became enthusiastic and even helped us in the search. "'But we didn't find anything.' strange muttered the detective i know jackley wasn't lying he had nothing to gain by deceiving me absolutely nothing he was in real earnest if ever a man was i hid it in the old tower those were his words he would have told more if he had been able and what could he mean by the old tower of tower mansion why should he be so careful to say the old tower everyone knows the mansion has two towers the old and the new "'Of course, it may be that we didn't search thoroughly enough,' Joe said. "'The stuff may be hidden in the flooring or behind the walls.' "'That's the only solution I could think of,' replied Fenton Hardy. "'I'm not satisfied yet that the loot isn't there. "'I'm going to have to get in touch with Applegate "'and ask permission for a real thorough search of both towers. "'It's to his interest as well as mine.' "'Applegate thinks possibly Jackley hid the stuff all right, but that Robinson found it and sold it,' said Frank. "'He hinted that he was of the opinion that Robinson was in league with the thief.' "'It does look rather bad,' Mr. Hardy admitted. "'One couldn't blame Applegate very much for thinking Robinson found the stuff after it was hidden and made away with it.' "'Robinson wouldn't do that,' cried Joe. "'He's too honest.' "'I don't think he would do it either.' But sometimes, if a man is in need of money and temptation is placed in his way, he gives in. I'd hate to believe that of Robinson, but if that stuff isn't found in the tower, I'll have to admit that it looks very much as if he were mixed up in it. The entered view with their father left the Hardy Boys feeling far from cheerful, for they saw that Mr. Robinson was now more deeply involved in the affair than before. On the face of it, circumstances seemed to be against the caretaker. "'Just the same,' said Frank, as the boys left the house and went down the street. "'I don't believe Jackley ever hid the stuff in the tower. "'If he had ever so much as opened the tower door, "'he would have left some marks in the dust, and we would have seen them. "'So I don't believe Robinson came along later and got the loot. "'As we saw it, the dust in the tower hadn't been disturbed in weeks. "'Why, there was even dust on the doorknob when Mr. Applegate let us in.' "'Then why should Jackley say he hid the stuff there?' exclaimed Frank, puzzled. Don't ask me. I'm just as much in the dark as you are. When the boys reached the business section of the city, they found that already Jack Lee's confession had become common property. People were discussing the deathbed confession on the street corners, and newsboys were busy selling copies of papers in which the story of the criminal's last statement was featured on the front page under black headlines. Policeman Con Riley was ambling along Main Street in the morning sunshine, swinging his club with the air of a man without a care in the world. When he saw the boys, he frowned, for there was no love lost between the Hardy Boys and the Bayport Police Department. Well, he grunted, I hear you got the stuff back. I wish we had, said Frank. What? said the constable, brightening up at once. You didn't get it? I thought it said in the paper this morning that this fellow Jackley told where he had hidden it. He did. And you can't find it. Ho, ho. Con Riley indulged in a hearty laugh. What a fine detective your father is. Didn't Jackley say the stuff was hidden in the old tower? What more does he want? Our father didn't search for the stuff, retorted Frank. We did. And it wasn't there. 
Jackley must have made a mistake. It wasn't there, exclaimed Riley in high delight. That's a good one. That's the best one I've heard in years. He chuckled exceedingly and slapped his knee. Jackley put a good one over on your father that time. <laughs> the stuff wasn't there. Riley wiped the tears from his eyes and went on his way, trying to laugh and at the same time retain his dignity as an officer of the law. The joke, he decided, was too good to keep, so as he proceeded back toward the police station, there to edify Chief Colligan Detective Smuff with the tale, he buttonholed various passers-by and poured the story into their willing ears. It was not long before the yarn had spread throughout the city with that swiftness peculiar to stories spread by word of mouth, and in the telling the story was exaggerated, the net effect being that Fenton Hardy was made to look ridiculous by believing a false confession. Highly colored accounts of the boys' search of the tower quickly spread, and throughout the day they were subjected to many caustic and sarcastic inquiries on the part of friends and acquaintances alike. They took all these remarks in good part, although they did not enjoy their sudden prominence. Never mind, said Frank. We'll show them yet. I hope they find that stuff when they search the towers again, added Joe. Then the people will have to eat crow. It'll be our turn to laugh. Yes, agreed Frank, but just now our laughter seems to be in a far distant future. When they returned home, they found that Fenton Hardy had been busy in the meantime, and had convinced Herd Applegate that a thorough search of the towers would be advisable. True, he had not accomplished this without great deal of opposition on the part of Adelia, and without misgivings on the part of Herd Applegate himself, who had by that time come to the conclusion that Robinson had indeed been mixed up in the affair all along. In this conviction, he was sustained by Chief Collig, who had paid a call at the Applegate home as soon as Collig had told him of the vain search of the towers. "'The Chief says Robinson is behind it, and I'm beginning to think he's right,' said Applegate. "'But how about the confession?' Mr. Hardy asked. "'The Chief says that's all a blind. Jackley did it protect Robinson. They were both working together.' I know it looks bad for Robinson, but I don't think it would hurt to give the towers another thorough search. I was the one who heard Jackley make the confession, and I don't believe he was lying. I believe he was trying to tell me all he knew. Maybe, maybe. I think he was too smart for you, Mr. Hardy, and everybody else thinks so, too. It was all a hoax. I'll believe that after I've searched the towers inside and out. Well, go ahead. Go as far as you like, but I don't think you'll find that treasure. With that, Mr. Hardy was content. He made preparations for a search of the towers, although Adelia Applegate flatly declared that the detective was making a laughing stock of her and her brother, and that if the nonsense continued, she would leave Tower Mansion forever and carry out her oft-expressed intention of going to one of the South Sea Islands as a missionary. In spite of the protestations of the worthy lady, however, the search was carried out. The old tower was visited first, and for the greater part of the following morning the place was searched from top to bottom. Even the floors were torn up in places in the quest for some secret hiding place in which Jackley might have left the loot. But although Fenton Hardy, accompanied by the boys and Herd Applegate, who soon became infected with the dogged enthusiasm of the others and lent every assistance in his power, hunted throughout the old tower in every conceivable place, the missing jewels and bonds were not recovered. "'Nothing left but to search the new tower,' Mr. Hardy commented briefly, when the search was over, and throughout the whole afternoon the new tower was the scene of a search that was as thorough as it was fruitless." Walls and partitions were tapped, floors were sounded, furniture was minutely examined. Not an inch of space escaped the minute scrutiny of the detective and his helpers. But as the search wore on and the loot still evaded discovery, the chagrin of Fenton Hardy deepened, and Herd Applegate finally lost his temper. A hoax, he declared, a hoax from start to finish. The man was in earnest, the detective insisted. Then where is the stuff? Someone else may have found it. That's the only explanation I can think of. Who else could have taken it but Robinson? To this, Mr. Hardy was silent. In spite of his knowledge of and liking for the man, he was beginning to suspect that the caretaker may have had a hand in the affair after all. 
Either that, or Jack Lee simply told that yarn to shield Robinson, declared Applegate. I'm not going to give up this search yet, said Mr. Hardy patiently. Perhaps the loot was hidden somewhere about the grounds. So the grounds of Tower Mansion, particularly in the vicinity of the two towers, were thoroughly searched. The shrubbery was inspected, but to no avail. The search continued until sundown, and by that time Adelia Applegate was pale with wrath, for the place, as she expressed it, had been turned upside down. Heard Applegate was outspoken in his rage and disappointment, while Fenton Hardy was deeply chagrined. And for the boys, although they had expected that the additional search would be without success, they shared their father's bewilderment. "'I can't understand it,' admitted the detective. "'I could have sworn that Jack Lee was in earnest when he made that confession. He knew he was near death, and that he had nothing to gain by concealment. I can't understand it at all.' And there the mystery remained, deeper than it had ever been. End of chapter 19Chapter 20 of The Tower Treasure by Franklin W. Dixon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Flash in the Tower For two days after the unsuccessful search of Tower Mansion, there were no further developments in the affair of the robbery. But on the third day, Chief Colleg took a hand. The first intimation the Hardy Boys had of it was when they met Callie Shaw and Isla Morton on their way to school. Isla, a plump, dark girl, was a sister of Chet Morton, and had achieved the honor of being about the only girl Joe Hardy had ever conceded to be anything but an unmitigated nuisance. Joe, who was shy in the presence of girls, professed a lofty scorn for all members of the other sex, particularly those of high school age, but had once grudgingly admitted that Isla Morton was all right for a girl. This from him was high praise. "'Have you heard what's happened?' asked Callie as they met the boys near the school entrance. "'School call off for today?' asked Joe eagerly. "'No, no, nothing like that. It's about the Robinsons.' "'What's happened now?' "'Mr. Robinson has been arrested again!' The Hardy Boys stared at her as though thunderstruck. "'What for?' demanded Frank in astonishment. "'Over that robbery at Tower Mansion. He has been working in the city lately, and Chief Colleague sent Detective Smuff for him last night. Isla and I were over to see the Robinson girls last night, and they told us about it. Smuff should be back by now.' "'Well, can you beat that?' exclaimed Frank. I wonder what's the big idea of arresting him again. It seems the chief has got an idea that Mr. Robinson was in league with this man Jackley, the man your father got the confession from. He told Mrs. Robinson last night that he was pretty sure Mr. Robinson had the stuff hidden somewhere and that he was going to find out. He was perfectly mean and nasty about it, and Mrs. Robinson doesn't know what to do. The Hardy Boys looked at one another. The affair had suddenly assumed more serious proportions. "'If Mr. Robinson is brought back, he'll lose his job, and he had a hard time getting it anyway,' said Isla. "'The worst of it is,' said Frank slowly, "'that the case looks pretty bad against Mr. Robinson. "'You don't think they'll send him to the penitentiary?' "'It looks bad. The thief said he hid the stuff in the old tower, "'and when we looked for it, the stuff wasn't there.' About the only person that could have found it and taken it away was Mr. Robinson himself. He wouldn't do it, declared Isla indignantly. We're sure he wouldn't, but a jury mightn't be so easy to convince. It was time to go into school at that moment, and they went to their classrooms, Frank and Joe deeply worried by what they had just heard. At recess that morning they met Jerry, Phil, Tony, and Chet Morton and told them the news. All the boys were highly concerned over this sudden turn in events. "'This will be tough on Perry,' said Phil. "'It'll be tough on the whole family,' Chet declared. "'They've had enough trouble over this dirty affair as it is.' The boys discussed the situation from all angles, and racked their brains for some way whereby they could help the Robinsons, but they were reluctantly forced to admit that only by actual discovery of the hidden loot could Mr. Robinson be cleared of suspicion in connection with the robbery. 
Even if he were tried and acquitted, it would be a stain on his reputation for the rest of his life, as long as the treasure isn't recovered, Frank summed up. We'll just have to wait and see what happens, Joe said. We've done all we could, and it hasn't been enough. And Dad has done the same. I'm sorry on his account. He was so sure he had cleared the whole thing up when he got the confession from Jackley. But there was something lacking. Well, we all helped too, remarked Jerry. We kept Colligan's Smuff from catching that train. Jackley wouldn't have talked at all if they had seen him. So, reluctantly enough, the boys were forced to admit that they were facing a stone wall. This also was the conclusion of Fenton Hardy when they talked to him at lunch that day. There's nothing to be done, said the detective. Robinson has been arrested, and while he might be cleared by a skillful lawyer, he hasn't any money to spend on his defense. Whether he is cleared or not, his reputation is ruined. Unless the loot is found, put in Joe. Yes, unless the loot is found. That is his only hope. But I don't think there is much chance of that. And there, the mystery of Tower Mansion rested for the time being. The arrest of Mr. Robinson furnished a sensation for a day or so, and then the case receded into the background, the newspapers finding other things to become excited about. But for the Robinsons, it was, naturally enough, a matter of supreme moment. Perry Robinson paid a call at the Hardy home, pleading with the great detective to continue his efforts to clear the accused man. Mr. Hardy was sympathetic, but, as he said, he was facing a stone wall. I've done all I can, my boy, he explained to the grief-stricken lad. If there was anything more I could do, I would do it. But there are no more clues. If Red Jackley's confession couldn't clear up the affair, then nothing else could. I'm afraid. He left the sentence unfinished. Do you mean my father will go to jail? I wouldn't say that, but you must be prepared to face the worst. He didn't do it said Perry doggedly. I know you have confidence in him, but the law looks only at the facts. Many an innocent man has been convicted on less evidence. It will kill my mother. Mr. Hardy was silent. I don't know what to do, said Perry. I'd do anything to save him, but there's nothing... There is nothing any of us can do now, unless by some lucky chance the loot is recovered. That would clear everything up, of course. But in the meantime, we just have to wait and hope. And you can't do anything more, Mr. Hardy? A detective is not a miracle man, my boy, said Fenton Hardy kindly. He is only a man who is trained in tracing criminals. He has to go by the facts at his disposal. I have exhausted every line of action in this case. Everything that could be done has been done. Perry Robinson got up, twisting his cap nervously in his hands. "'We all thank you very much, too, Mr. Hardy,' he said huskily. "'Don't think I've been ungrateful by coming here and asking you to do more. I guess I didn't realize just how hopeless it is.' "'It isn't hopeless, exactly. Don't think that. There's always hope, you know. But be prepared for the worst.' "'I'll have to be.' With that, the boy left. Frank and Joe met him in the hallway and awkwardly tried to express their sympathy. Perry was grateful. "'I know both of you have done a lot for us in this mess,' he said. "'If it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't even have Jack Lee's story to go on.' "'We're only sorry it didn't work out as we hoped, Perry,' Frank said. "'We thought that would clear the whole thing up. Instead, it seems to have involved your father deeper than ever. It wasn't your fault. Perhaps something will turn up yet.' Joe and I aren't going to lie down on the job now. There isn't much we can do, but we'll have our eyes open for more clues, if there are any. Perry Robinson shrugged his shoulders dispiritedly. I guess there isn't much use now, he said, but I appreciate it of you. When he went away, the Hardy boys watched him going down the front walk. His carefree stride was gone, and instead he walked mechanically, as though in a daze. "'What a fine pair of detectives we are!' exclaimed Frank in sudden disgust. "'If we had been any good at all, we could have got those clues soon enough for Dad to have caught Jackley in time.' "'No use worrying about that now,' replied his brother. "'It was just the way things happened.' "'Well, there's one thing left. We must find that loot!' 
Haven't we tried? Yes, but we can try some more. We've just got to clear Mr. Robinson. And there's only the one way. We must find the loot. It was a dull, gloomy day, indicative of rain, and this did not add to the boys' spirits. To ease their feelings, the brothers took a walk, and quite unconsciously their steps took them in the vicinity of Tower Mansion. "'Let's have a squint at the old place from the outside,' suggested Joe. "'Don't let Adelia see you, or she'll come after you with a broomstick,' chuckled Frank. "'Gee, but she's a tartar!' They walked into the grounds. It was growing darker now, and they easily made their way among the trees and bushes to the vicinity of the rambling mansion. They gazed up at the old tower questioningly. "'Some puzzle,' was Frank's comment. "'Will the case of the tower treasure ever be solved?' "'Search me,' was his brother's slangy answer. "'Perhaps. Oh, Frank, look!' he added suddenly. He was gazing at the upper windows of the old stone tower. He had seen a strange flash of light. Now this flash was followed by another. "'That's queer,' muttered Frank. "'What can it mean?' The light disappeared. Then of a sudden it flashed out and downward in the direction of the lads. "'Must be looking for us,' gasped Joe and started to get behind a bush. "'It's Adelia, and she has a big flashlight,' came a moment later from Frank. "'What do you know about that?' "'She's looking for the treasure herself,' cried Joe. <laughs> "'And after all she said about our looking being nothing but foolishness.' They saw the woman gaze out of the window for a few seconds. In one hand she held the flashlight. For a moment she turned the light into her own face, and the boys saw there a look of utter disgust. "'Then <laughs> find it, I'll bet a cookie,' chuckled Joe. "'Come on, let's get away before she spots us,' returned his brother, and they were soon on their way. As they walked home, Frank and Joe talked the matter over. They smiled when they thought of the eccentric woman up in that dusty old tower, but their minds soon went back to Slim and the troubles of the Robinson family. "'We've got to find that loot,' declared Frank emphatically. "'No matter where that tower treasure is, we've got to find it.' "'Got to? But can we?' "'We simply have to, I tell you.'" End of chapter 20